My name is Abhishek. I have been working as a faculty of aerospace engineering uh, since uh, uh, 2011. My area of expertise is unmanned aerial systems. As you would be aware, uh, UAS or what is more popularly known as drones has become a talk of the town and uh, we see them making, a, making inroads in every walk of life. Be it I mean, shooting videos for marriage parties or uh, spraying pesticides and urea in uh, uh, farms or police force using them to keep an eye on the crowd. You can see them getting used in Kummela uh, or being used by our defense forces for the safety of our uh, uh, borders. So, so drones have been actually uh, making a huge impact uh, in every walk of our life and uh, I am going to discuss in some detail about various aspects of this technology and where we stand uh, in India, uh, as, rather as, as India in terms of I mean the, the capacity that uh, exists in the country and the level of technology and the technological maturity that we have achieved uh, with over a, a decade long research in this domain. So if you look at the history of uh, use of drones in India, we have been largely importers. Uh, and uh, even now, though we have taken, uh, I would say, serious strides uh, by making tremendous progress in terms of uh, developing various in-house technologies and, and designs, we are still having to rely on importing large number of components. So let me give you examples. So typically, uh, a drone consists of various electronic components and structural components. So structural components uh, consist of the airframe, uh, the functional elements, it could be wings, it could be propellers, and then electronic components such as motors, speed controllers, uh, and various other sensors, because sensors are the key to the, the autonomy of the drone. Uh, and unfortunately, we do not have uh, in-house manufacturing capability in India. And that is where, I mean, we are uh, seriously dependent on imports, uh, so be it motors yeah. uh, or uh, sensors such as accelerometers, gyros, magnetometers uh, or sensors such as uh, cameras, both day and night cameras uh, and various other payload units. So we are often importing these from abroad. So while I mean we have now been able to create the capability and technology where one can design a new configuration, we can build the airframe, we can design it to meet particular performance requirements. Because there are certain problems and challenges which are very unique to India. And now, uh, I mean, as a community and as a uh, drone ecosystem, we are definitely capable of building these solutions for our own requirements. But yes, still a lot of work needs to be done to reduce the reliance on import. Uh, and this is, I would say, beyond the direct uh, capability of just uh, aerospace engineering. Uh, because drones being a multidisciplinary area requires intervention from computer scientists, electronic engineers, mechanical engineers, and so on. So the most critical element right now I would talk about is the, the component manufacturing itself. Okay. Uh, we need to build the ecosystem. Right now we, we, we have integrators and, and people who are able to design drones uh, and come up with innovative solutions. But even then they have to rely heavily on importing subsystems and components from outside. For example, I mean motors. Okay. Uh, it is not very hard to design and build motors. and and, and uh, a proof of that is that actually there are now two, three companies who are emerging in a big way who are now indigenously building uh, these motors. Uh, although I mean they still have to import the magnets which get used in the motor. But that is still okay because magnet is not an active element. Uh, and if I start making the motor sy system in India, I have now more freedom to design UAVs and, and build custom motors for them. Okay. So I do not have to rely on what is readily available of the self. So this gives a tremendous advantage. But something which requires immediate attention is the sensors, the area of sensors. Uh, and unfortunately, this requires very high level of investment. So this is sort of a, a, a area where I mean government can make a, a key intervention. And yes, there are so many startups who want to work in these areas. Okay? Uh, so we need to support them. Uh, government is already trying to do, I mean, a lot of things in this direction. But I, I believe, I mean, we still need to keep working in this area and bring in further support and clarity so that the subsystem problem is resolved in a big way and we build the ecosystem from ground up. That is, any component that you want to buy, you have at least three to four vendors readily available in India who are able to scale their uh, supply 
to a to an extent where i mean i can make 10 drones or i can make 1000 drones i i can easily get the supplies and components uh, made in india we now have a large number of uh, drone startups existing in the country probably the number goes beyond hundreds but large number of these startups are actually just integrators so what they do is that they will uh, buy component of the self uh, often from our neighbors or or from other uh, 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 countries outside india and they would just integrate them and try to build a solution around that okay. but this works fine for small drones when we come to larger drones with heavy payload requirements okay. for example behind me you see a, a drone which is capable of lifting 20 kg of payload you would not find a drone like this i mean readily outside and to build something like this requires a lot of understanding of the the key technological elements okay. so therefore this requires innovation and uh, in depth understanding of the technology uh, and that is where i mean many startups are lacking so this actually is uh, not really helping the the drone ecosystem in a big way primarily because almost everybody has the same set of solution and one side i mean yes this creates a lot of options for uh, users but if we see that this is not really taking the or pushing the boundaries of the technology in a big way so where i mean they can become a big differentiator is that i mean try to establish their niche and of course do innovation uh, for example i mean uh, there is this chinese company called dji which has a long established monopoly in consumer drone okay. right now it is banned in india okay. so this has now presented a tremendous opportunity for indian startups to come up with a solution which can actually try to compete with dji okay, and and build this consumer drones which will shoot aerial videos or do photography hobbyists can use it uh, people who are movie makers they can use these but then it has to come at the same level and 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 i perfectly understand that it is not very easy to match their level of uh, quality and uh, proficiency in a short period of time but we have to make a start okay. and it's very important that we we look at these kind of problems problems which remain unsolved and there are plenty of them okay. so iit kanpur has been in some sense the uh, i would say the breeding ground from for drone technology for quite some time so even before i joined i mean some of my colleagues i mean they started this doing research in the unmanned aerial system technology way back in 2002 2003 4 around that time so almost two decades away so this has created a, a very uh, good legacy at iit kanpur and of course we have the we are i mean our aerospace department is probably the best equipped department uh, anywhere in the country we have our own 1 uh, km long runway which allows any uav developer or researcher to test his ideas do flight test and 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 find out the details and performance in no time we have a national wind tunnel facility which can be used to test out before i mean making the drone i can go and check my aerodynamic performance there okay. uh, we have uh, one of the largest motion capture areas uh, available in the helicopter and vito laboratory and and now i mean with the funding and support from uh, uttar pradesh government okay, we have established a center of excellence in this area so building on our rich legacy of almost two decades in uav research there are right now at least 18 to 90 faculty members who are working on different aspects of uav technology so be it aero mechanics and design be it autonomy be it obstacle detection avoidance be it uh, manufacturing uh, of innovative and uh, new designs be it testing characterization uh, we have faculty and expertise in every possible domain so whether you want to work on application side of things or you want to work on the, the design and innovation and you want to accelerate your product development okay, we have all the facility available uh, uh, basically uh, at one place in iit kanpur okay. so we now have uh, 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 manufacturing uh, capability also primarily from prototyping point of view so we have very good 3d printers we have our own uh machining centers for metal components manufacturing okay. so with all this uh, it is now very easy for a startup to come to iit kanpur and get full technical support and not only that because several startups have come out of iit kanpur we have now very good understanding of how the whole drone market space works okay. where are the demands where are the the requirements what kind of solutions have to be developed to create a good business and use case so we we are capable of providing not only the technical mentorship but also the business mentorship so that's where i mean i would like to reach out to new startups to come and join iit kanpur uh, where they we have extremely good incubator 
uh, and a nice incubation support. We have Technopark, uh, where established companies can come here and uh, collaborate with uh, faculty here and try to get their problems solved. And, and now, like I mentioned, I mean, we have now Center of Excellence in, in Unmanned Aerial System Technology, uh, where, I mean, we not only have the R&D support, but we also have uh, uh, one RPTO, which is Remote Pilot Training Organization coming up in our flight laboratory. Through this now, I mean, uh, young engineers and uh, 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 enthusiasts can get training in drone operations. Okay. So we'll be offering specialized courses for them uh, as per the DGCA norms. It will be a DGCA recognized facility uh, where, I mean, people can now get this uh, remote pilot uh, licenses or certificates rather okay, uh, and uh, acquire the, this kind of skill. Beyond that, now we also have MTech program in IIT Kanpur, which is first such program in the country which is uh, giving degree now in unmanned aerial system engineering. So this is uh, a great opportunity because this kind of uh, coursework is not available anywhere in the country. In this, any engineer with a bachelor's degree in aerospace, mechanical, computer science, civil, uh, electrical, from all the disciplines people can come in and, and many, some more also. Uh, and they can get specialized training in UAV technology, uh, be it on the aeromechanics and design or be it on the autonomy side of things. Okay. So that way, I mean, we have now uh, capability to help you out with uh, trained manpower, uh, help you out with technical expertise, which will accelerate your product development and help you realize your goals in the shortest possible time. So apart from the drone center of excellence, we also have another uh, uh, testing center coming up at IIT Kanpur. Okay. This center is going to be uh, it is through a, a, a getting the funding through a scheme called uh, DTIS, Drone, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Defense Testing Infrastructure Scheme actually. Okay. So in this, Government of India is giving a funding of around 45 crores uh, and now there is a, a, a sort of a, a conglomerate or a, a special uh, purpose vehicle is being created uh, which is going to consist of IIT Kanpur, HAL, BEL and some other organizations including my startup called Endure Air, which will establish a drone testing center. So this will be an NABL accredited testing center. So that means that I mean any test which you uh, get your drone done for, it, it will certify it for those performance requirements. So if you claim that okay my drone has such and such features, all these features can be tested here and certified by these labs okay, or, or this, uh, this center. Okay. Uh, as a result, now getting the type certificate from DGCA would become much easier okay. or if you want to go for a a certification from Semilac for your defense uh, application oriented drones, that also would be possible. So this is a, a unique thing, I mean there are only such two centers coming up, one actually is being established in uh, near Chennai and other is uh, being established here in the uh, defense corridor uh, and as a part of that at IIT Kanpur because IIT Kanpur is a partner of the defense corridor project uh, for government of India. Okay. So it's, it's actually a very, very important uh, point that uh, unfortunately in India, uh, industry and academia has been working in isolation for too long. Okay. Uh, this creates a, I would say, uh, mismatch between the expectations of industry and academia both and also uh, the, the lack of synergy actually is hampering both on the academic side of things and more so on the industry side of things. Okay. The reason being that uh, academia has freedom and experience of conducting cutting edge research in this area, which at many times industry cannot do, primarily because uh, of their pressing needs towards generating revenue and being profitable and so on and so forth. While in academic environment, I can conduct research at very low TRL levels, very low technology readiness levels, which means I can work on far spaced ideas, which may not look feasible right now, but if I keep working on it for five years or so, in my sixth year, I can make it bring it to a point where it actually looks like a viable product. Uh, so it is ex absolutely essential that I mean the startups, especially uh, people who are, who are uh, new to this domain and who are uh, uh, budding entrepreneurs, they try to come and collaborate with uh, relevant faculty members in, in IITs okay? because this will really help them uh, speed up their technology development. And this could be a win-win situation for both of us. Okay, so there is opportunity. You can uh, come through Technopark or you can come through uh, uh, Incubator if you are trying to incubate your company and leverage the experience that is readily available here. Uh, we have uh, extremely good manpower also. So if you come and uh, get attached to IITs, 
you would get access to highly trained manpower which will really help you build a really good team and in in that sense i mean uh, it will be tremendously beneficial for uh, growth of the company